EQ win against a chip. I believe Skylar was on a carry, and they had a Mathilda to really supplement uh, and save him from those big five people ganks. Oh. But it turns out right now, without the same kind of main carry potential for Skylar, and without the Mathilda even, RRQ, they seem to be doubling down on just getting a proper teamfight composition. But that means they have to try and find someone that can help out when it comes to the macro like wave clearing and decision making to just be able to actually match Geek Fam's presence around the map. I was about to say that the Valentina on the Arlet was a very quick decision by RRQ seeing as the Camarilla is still open. But then we've seen Beloisky being able yeah. to play around the Camilla by changing the gameplay from the chip. So exactly. it's not necessarily a direct counter in this regard. So understandable. Geek, however, go for the Barats as well as the Vexana. So already really good cryo in the neutral objectives. But we have a comment by Keyboy. In my opinion, players who are hard to catch are Skylar, Iman, and Nino. And technically that's still true. Skylar was so hard to catch. What was his KDA? I think he died once. That's it, right? Yeah, yep. And there were so many moments he was like in a 1v1, 1v2, 1v3. <laughs> and still, nobody could catch the guy. It was 1v2. It's still really good. It was 1v1v2 in the end of a team fight against a boy and... Uh, technically 2v2, he had, he had the hard guard. Yes, but the hard guard was, has expired. It was Ray and a boy that were able to catch him eventually later on in that first game. Now Geek, they get the Barats, they bet with the Fredrian, so now limiting the options for RRQ in that jungle position. RRQ, they're respecting this Khalid, we haven't seen him for a long, long time. They're gonna ban Bakshi too, they ban Akai, oh! They're really putting Fairsick on the spot, the guy that is... I, I don't want to say new in the in the lineup, but new this season. And the last time we saw him on a Assassin, it didn't really work out well. Plus, they're now against the Barat, so yeah. the only choice he has is the Boxia. I guess there could be, uh, um, you know, you, you can go for Martis. Technically, it's still there. It's You rarely see it. I think the last time we saw I don't even remember when we last saw the Martis, but it's still there. It is still part of his hero pool. Oh! They'll go for the Alpha, okay! Okay! Interesting. We've only seen Annabelle be able to use this to its full efficiency, but Geek Fam, they add one more layer of long distance macro playmaking with the Spear of Destruction from the Moscow, and they have a Yu Tong to really shut down that backline presence from RRQ. The question is, is... Is it a Roger? Exactly. The question is, what backline presence? Exactly. If they if they go with someone that's too far Brody behind, up. it's going to be too difficult. I think Brody can still kind of Bruno work out. Bruno or Brody up is the Bs. That's the only viable choice, right? The Brody the, works really well against the, the B lineup. <laughs> the B lineup. Yeah, I think I think so. I, uh, against the Moscow, the Bruno does really well. The Brody does even better. And hey, we have spoken about this before. Yu Zong versus Brody. You can poke him out from the skies. And RRQ, technically they have a snowball comp. So if they really want to... Oh, oh what? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Irito. Uh, it, is a a, it is a hero we haven't seen in a long time. 0% win rate this season. Chidera played it, lost on it. Kabuki played it, lost on it. It's been a way too long, but Skylar used to play this quite well. Season but 12. again, it's a different season yeah. with a different set of factors here. But RRQ feel like it's just time to try and bring it out with the Alpha, with the export. It's a full-on collision composition. No way out, by the way. So literally living up to the posters, the banners from the kingdom. Do or die. And now you can finally say what you wanted to say before. What, what was that? Desperate, desperate times time call for desperate measures. They're scraping the barrel here for solutions against Geek, against Geek Fam. We'll see if that works out and can they match up to the positioning tools that Geek Fam have. The shortcut, the Spear of Destruction. Five seconds till the, the enemy clock is ticking the for the Kings Smash of Kings. Them. One more chance for them to force this to a game number three. Unless they want to give the playoffs on a silver platter for the King Slayers themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number two between Geek and RRQ Hoshi. Even the majority of the players of RRQ, they're running bottom charges. They want to be as aggressive as possible. Look at that, Maloisky already trying to be pesky, be annoying. 
And you have to wonder right now, what's the plan when it comes to those big team fights? Is Clay supposed to take the Eternal Guard? Is that it? It does seem like one of the only big, uh, <laughs> big tools they can get. Don and Luke, though, Yu Zong against Exborg. Gonna be a lot of fire, literally, in that matchup. Look at this. Okay. Boloski just buying as much time as he can. First, he's going to use a red tree for the purple ball, so he almost actually threatened the take there. But his experience allows him to just stay cool and go for it. Yeah. On the bottom side, though, Skylar on that Irithel against the Moskov. Oh, 2v1 on top. I don't think this is a winning lane for the Irithel, even, you know? Like, because. Usually, Irithel, you want to outmaneuver your opponent, but when your opponent can just blink to you, it's similar to the Claude, why the Claude does okay against the Irithel. You know, they're gonna go for a stun right now on the Skylar. They might just be able to get the Revenge. kill down as well! One last shot to do it! Oh. No! Skylar, what are you made of? How? <laughs> what? Again? Again? We saw it in game number one. You thought that there would be a little glimpse of revenge coming through for Chidera from that solo kill on the Claude and the Natan, but he turned it completely around. He gets out unscathed, and for him, that's the first blood. Chidera in a 2v1. What? That just doesn't seem like it's supposed to happen, and now both teams face off, trying to hold each other from the level 4, preparing to go for the neutral objective. And RRQ definitely have the more aggressive composition. Do they want to go for this, though, and risk getting comboed? Black Dragon Farm used up. Finn, oh, with a flicker early. Trying to get out of the death is welcome that hasn't been popped even yet. But look at that damage. Coming down, Luke with Petrify as well. They're going to find one, and that is a lot of damage placed down onto the back line. But Loisky will be able to help take another. Death is welcome as the Retribution was secured by Reyes. Clay actually flickers forward to go for Loisky, but that is another trade down, and Finn will fall. Now another teleport. Luke has come back from the base. It's a furious time to cut them off. Clay still surviving. Luke, one HP, and my goodness. What a crazy sequence of events. Overall though, oh! What? Spear, Spear of Destruction! Boom! What a run down! Boom. Wow! The last insanity! What is going on? From down under! Overall though, the turtle taken by Geek Fam. They sure have control right here. And speaking of the emblems earlier, because we weren't allowed time to talk about it, Beloisky has the Quantum Charge on the chip. Usually we see him with the, with the Concussive Blast to try and help with the clearing, with extra bit of damage. But he wants to be sneaky. He wants to be able to like move, uh, escape from sticky situations, and he wants a bit more sustain because he's playing this style of disruption to try and stop Fersic. It hasn't worked out so Ooh. far, though. They're going for Vin. Wait, what? Fersic, Spear of Al Natalia. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Reset. Reset. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a look at the audience prediction. It seems like, ooh, very interesting. 60% for RRQ. That's a different flavor that we've seen. Usually we see the Kingdom just really dominate in these prediction rates, but it looks like either the Kingdom has started to falter or Geek have amassed the fan immunity even more this season. Oh my god, oh my god. What the heck, dude? Oh. That was, oh. That was a 5v1, and now it might be another 5v1 as Skylar gets dove on, forced back under his own tier one. Boloiski going on to Clay, who's stolen the Eternal Guard, and look at the timer. Perfect timing for the turtle to spawn back up top. For both of these junglers, we do see that Ray is already at level seven. Rusik is caught a little bit behind. But there you go. Okay. So they are equalized right now, and it does look like RRQ want to go for a contest. Dawn and Vin are already in position. You can see the Eternal Guard as well for Clay, but they already open it up. Whoa, very early, actually. Clay with the Eternal Guard on the final slash from Vin as well. On to Ray, who still has the Death as well. Kapur petrifying the Furious Diamond. A lot of AoE in the back left with the Eternal Guard from a boy. Ray with the Retribution securing it, even though Ferris goes in with the of Alvord. It's a bit too late as the Dragon Tail catches a boy. Still able to flicker out of Clay. Clay still chasing, but look at the back. Vin now just trying to desperately survive. Goes in for vengeances on vengeances, but he isn't Batman. And that's a two for two. But Geek secure the neutral objective. Despite this aggressive composition for RRQ, they just haven't been able to find the same kind of success. The Skylar, surprisingly, isn't doing too bad in the lane. He is going to be behind, though, due to all the pressure and the possibilities of the gangs coming in. Oh Beloisk, my God, That's one, that's two, that's three, that's four! All four members! Teleporting in, but now Dawn actually takes it as well. The last insanity to Genera, but he's still able to get some more of the hits. And they will 
actually be able to just trade it one for two. Oh, wow. All things considered, actually, it's traded two for one by Geek Fam, so they can only really come out on top there. Arc is showing again that they do have aggression, they do have the damage. I feel like right now, though, they're just kind of caught bewildered and who exactly are they trying to dive onto for maximum value and where are they supposed to try and, and initiate and start the whole process of just being aggressive and just diving in towards the back. Because whoever is the main target for RRQ, I feel like at this point in the game, they can take out, whether that's a boy or Chidera. Aloyski is so annoying though. Mm -hmm. He was waiting for Skylar and then he gets information that they traded lanes. And so he's now back in the top lane to look for a trade onto Skylar, looking for a kill, a shutdown onto this man. I feel like now it's a bit of a reverse situation though. The longer the game kind of goes, I feel like RRQ actually don't do too badly in the late game, right? With the Alpha AoE, with, with, with the x Borg, with the Valentina technically as well. Oh, but Baloyski, he smells a, a fight, but no. <laughs> Vin gets out. It's okay, Luke and Teleport back again. They get some map pressure and they get the Moskov fast lane up top. And now, no shortcut available. Geek Fam still holding on to the turtle. Gray now at level 10 for a sick level 9. Is he close to 10? I think he needs to clear a camp first. I don't think he can contest. Persik is so far back. Eternal Guard though, still. Ray secures it. Persik was zoned completely out of the team fight and Luke with a Petrify onto the back of play. Eternal Guard knocking two up. The Spear of Alpha canceled out and Geek Fam now look to collapse once again. That's Belowski with a Flicker forward looking for some more damage as Don will be sliced and terrified and shut down. Luke with a Furious Dive into the back with the help of the heart or Eternal Guard rather. Final Slash into Clay's damage will send Luke to the Shadow Realm. So that's a trade, Luke for Dawn. And now Geek still pick up the neutral objective, but all these neutral objective takes, all these team fights, they haven't been clean for Geek either. So if they keep trading like this, who has the advantage? I feel like it's somewhat equal, especially later on. There's a chance that Geek can go for the uh, shortcut plays around the map. I feel like when it comes to fighting prowess, it's kind of equal. But when it comes to maneuvering around the map, now that's a whole different story. Geek Fam has a huge advantage there. And right now, they're still able to accumulate quite the gold advantage. It's kind of fluctuating up and down, but it's still slowly but surely rising for the Geek Fam because RRQ, they can't really farm as aggressively or as freely as they would want to because they're always concerned about Beloisky, right? When he can, if he can show up out of nowhere and start a, a pickoff. Skyler picks up another item. I think it's a Berserker's Fury. Yep, he has a Berserker's Fury and the has claws, but look at this. That's a defensive last insanity. Luke Fam might be able to just pressure this turret take easily now with that last insanity being used up. Ray just walking up, clearing out this wave, trying to help and poke it down. As the rest of RQ look toward mid lane now. With the Berserker's Fury pickup, is that a power spike for Skylar yet or not yet? Are we still waiting for something else? Wait a minute! Uh, does that answer <laughs> your question? Uh, what power spike if we have <laughs> that much map pressure? Beloisky is just standing in these bushes and enabling the team to look for pickoffs. Just punishing the movements of RRQ. Clay now. Give some damage done already. Used the last insanity earlier. Now uses it again defensively. But look at oh. that damage. Eternal Guard also popped in. Not able to connect this Vin. Looks for a possible engage again. Beloy's Kingdom is with it all. Able to find the stun on the Clay. And now the Fear oh. of Misery as well. Clay walked into the bush. Oh no, you hate to see it. The bush of disaster. The counter engage. Poor Clay. He gets immediately deleted from the game. And now, once again, the Lord Dance. But again, what? I was talking about the power spike, and you're right. I mean, like, what power spike? If Skyler's not even there, but now he's back, so... It is definitely a power spike, but considering that the Moskov also already is on three items, they're kind of equal in, in a way, but Skylar has the advantage of being able to basic attack while moving, right? That's always the advantage that an Aerithel has. So, in a way, he can be a bit more safe, a bit more maneuverable in these fights, but they gotta go in together, man. 
There's a lot of moments right here, like earlier, where Clay seems to be trying to get some more, trying to equalize, seeing the low HP bars from Geek Fam, but everyone else isn't on the same picture, and now Skylar once again gets jumped on. Again with the flank, and it's all on the Skylar. They go, oh my god, they go to defend, and he gets deleted as well. Where's Chidera in this skirmish? He's still in the midst of it all, able to dodge away from the last insanity with the abyssal step, and he looks for more! Dog taken down by the spear! Chidera going wild, and now Ray tops him down! It's a killing spree for Ray, and it is a big win for Geek Fam. 4 4 0, oh, make it 5 with the Lord. Again, once again, again and again and again, it's always the, the Crown Prince that stays strong alone. All his other members, his teammates have gone, and the Lord has also been taken away from them as well. Geek. Picking up all the scraps, getting all the value left, right, and center. Chidera now with another oh. item, the Malefic Roar. Wait, they were preparing for an ambush there. They wanted the final slash to be comboed by Skylar, waiting in the bush. He spent the whole time there just waiting in that bush instead of farming, trying to set up a trap for Geek Fam, but it did not come through, and Boloyski is already waiting behind them. And you can see the positioning. They don't want to leave the turret. They're concerned about Boloyski. And once they see him, now they'll be able to move a bit more. But with the Lord coming in, they're going to be losing multiple turrets. And even though the, the kills don't look too far different, but like the gold difference is just massive. And now they go in for another. It's just done. Forced back completely. Oh, man. This is just a painful siege to watch, too, because Geek Fam, they're trying to build up these waves. Only one though, one wave will be clashing down into that base. Black Dragon form enabling it now as Don jumps in with Last Insanity, trying to do some damage, but doesn't have any of the stacks spin. Able to get the final stack, but it's actually gonna help Geek Fam in the back. Chidera just wreaking havoc, now jumping back again on the Skylar and Finn as well. My goodness, they don't care of the turrets. They will just go straight for the bases of Oi launches in with a blinker and find Skylar on a Terrify. 12 minutes and 31 seconds. The King Slayers have done it again. They've done it against Kings. Now they do it against the Crown Prince. Welcome to playoffs, Geek Fam. After a long drawn journey here at MPL ID Season 13, we will be seeing the Geeks move forward to the next stage. We will see them move forward to the playoffs once again. And RRQ now are one game away of making history, of not making it to the playoffs. Tough times to be an RRQ fan, but it is what it is. They're called the Kingslayers for a reason. And right now, they're absolutely delivering. And who can complain about the results? Geek Fam is showing again that despite the fact that there were a few hiccups in Season 13, they are still absolute monsters if you give them the right situations and the right drafts. What a phenomenal performance. By every single member on the team, my goodness, Geek Fam. When they get their picks, it almost seems like it's a different team entirely. We saw them experimenting with the SS, we saw them experimenting with Florin. And if they go back to their signature style, which is, yeah, brawl it out, fight it out, and BBB moments all around, Big brain, big boy, whatever it is, it's Beloy. Jeez, man. Jeez, indeed. <laughs> what can you say, especially Yikes. in the late game? They're just so lethal, so deadly, and they have qualified for the playoff stage.